guys and welcome back to a new YouTube video. So I've come back from basic training and as part of the series explaining what reservist basic training is like, I wanted to talk about kit because I showed you the kit that I packed and now having come back from the training, I wanna sort of talk about kit that I wish I had because there is quite a lot of kit that I wish I took with me that would have made my life so much easier and when I do my next stint of training I'm definitely taking it with me but they just don't tell you to pack it on the kit list and you don't necessarily know like what you're allowed to have and what you're not allowed to have so I want to go into that today. I also will say that obviously this is the reserves so if you're in the regulars or you're going for regular basic training I don't know if you're going to be allowed it but in the reserves especially for my intake we were so if you are reservist would recommend. So from the kit that I took, I basically looked at the kit list and took a simplified or a condensed version of what they recommended to take and I used 99% of everything that I took and I think that if we were there for longer, which I will be on my next stint of training, then I'll use 100% of the things that I took. I would say the kit list is very helpful if you economise and just take the minimum amounts of what you need, especially for the reservist training, you're not there for that long you don't necessarily need to take everything. Like a prime example is they say to have a wash kit for the field and then a wash kit, a normal wash kit. I used the same one and I just took stuff out when I went into the field. So I would recommend kind of doing stuff like that rather than having two separate bags for a wash kit. Like, cause what's the point? It just eats up space, especially cause you have to like take all your kit to wherever you're training and back, like pack minimally. So because I did that, I feel like I got use out of everything, but there were a lot of things I wish I took. So I'm gonna basically explain them now and yeah, hopefully it will help you if you're going on training. So the first thing is canoe bags. They tell you to bring the clear plastic bags. Now my unit are very picky about, they like you to have everything by the book. So I think that if I banged out some canoe bags in our kit check, I don't know how that would go down. I don't think they would enjoy that but when you actually get to the training center, they don't care. So take from that what you will and navigate that how you will. But going forward, I basically am gonna take canoe bags. They're better, they're easier. And quite frankly, it saves you having to take loads of plastic bags with you and wallets and stuff because I thought it'd be easier having plastic bags because you'd be able to pick it up and see the items in there. But when it's dark, nothing, everything looks the same anyway. So the whole idea of being able to see into the bag, like is void really. So having canoe bags, I think would be easier. As I said, they're more waterproof and it more reusable. So they can be a bit expensive, but I think it's a better purchase for the long haul, especially if you're considering a longer army career. Going off that for coming back from the field is a nail brush. Like my nails are so grimmed up for about a week after I came up from the field, just mud under them, you can't really get it out. So next time I wanna bring a little nail brush just to make life easier, because I'm in the field I think for five days next time. So you can imagine the state that I'm gonna look like when I come back. So moving on from the field, just general things I wish I had that would have made my life 10 times easier. Number one is knee pads and elbow pads. We had to prone, you know, you lie down on concrete for hours every day. And the amount of like cuts and bruises I had all across my elbows, my hips were just insane. So especially when we're on the ranges, it's so hard to be accurate when all you can think about is my elbow is literally being split open by the gravel beneath me. It was just so uncomfortable. And you obviously, yeah, you have to do that for a long period of time as well. Like I know that builds resilience in the long run, but for the sake of doing a couple of days of training, it's not worth splitting every contactable surface with the floor with bruises and blood and all of that like just get some elbow pads get some knee pads it will make your life easier and also you'll be a more accurate shot because you're not worrying about my knee is gritting into gravel right now and also on that topic for the weapon system is because you're basically your hands in this position for a week because like you're running your fingers down the trigger guard and you're holding onto the pistol grip your hands get so calloused and also you're doing like loads of press ups and like holding stuff and gripping stuff the amount of calluses i had like my hands are split open even now and it's been about three weeks since i've come back and at the time i had so many blood blisters it was disgusting so definitely get some like lightweight gloves because the issue gloves that i have a crap and like they're really big and bulky they're great if you're in like the harbour area just like chilling and getting warm but when you're actually cutting about and wanting to use the weapon like they're just too chunky so i want to get some like thin lightweight ones that have a bit of padding in them so when you're doing all the things for the weapon your fingers don't get absolutely demolished i feel like generally all of these uh items that i want is just to make my life easier going off that i would want more t-shirts like the green under t-shirts and more sports bras and more socks you only get issued i think four pairs of socks 
two PT socks and three green undershirts and it's just not enough. Like especially with the green undershirts, you're thinking the whole week, like even though you get to do laundry, you're thinking, okay, the laundry's on this day and I've got PT so I'll wear a shirt on that day and then I'm gonna wanna wear a nice shirt for a different shirt for drill because you need to look smarter than the one that you're gonna wear in on the ranges. So then that's like your three shirts gone basically within a day. You kind of like factor in when to wear what and it literally means you're wearing the same grubby, shirt for PT like four days in a row and they get disgusting especially because it was 25 degrees the week that I did mine so you were sweaty all the time so you never had a clean shirt to put on for anything so it just meant you felt really grubby literally like most days we were just standing in the in the bathroom doing washing in the sink like because the the amount of washes we got just weren't enough and they weren't at the times when we would have wanted them and being a woman more sports bras like I had four wasn't enough not gonna lie because I said you want a clean one for PT a clean one for normal full day and then you want a clean one for drill because you don't want to be wearing one for PT and then you get really sweaty and you have a shower and you, you don't want to put that same one back on and same with what you're doing all day and then same with drill. So you get through like three a day, but then you wear them for multiple days, if that makes any sense. So yeah, on like day two or three of wearing one for three gym sessions, you wanna change it, but then you don't have the washing to be able to do it. Moving off the clothes front, now generally just the fun items for the evening that make life easier. Number one, a flask. So many people had these little ammo pouch flasks when I was on my course and I was envious because they could fill up with a coffee at, at breakfast or at lunch and then just have it all day. And I, I did not. So they just had basically coffee whenever they wanted and uh, envious of that. So I definitely want to get a little flask for when I go on course next and going off that bringing the little like, you know, Nescaf um, sachets for like hot chocolate and uh, coffee because yes, you get them in the ration packs, but they're a bit fiddly and they're also kind of grim I'm not gonna lie the coffee in the ration packs is not nice so having those little like caramel macchiato in the field would set me right and it's just nice to sort of be able to have a coffee and stuff when you want also we had a guy James on uh, my mod too who brought a kettle we didn't know until like the second to last day but everyone was going to him for hot water like all week apparently basically that kettle was like currency in that block people were just like cup of tea time coffee time so hopefully more people will bring kettles for the room next time because it makes life so much easier you can have a little pot noodle if you want you can have coffee hot chocolate all that before bed oh and that's like morale right there just for something so minor so kettle for the room coffee sachets hot chocolate sachets all that good stuff and then i'll also say better snacks because i took what i thought would be like healthy snacks as in i took protein bars and like nuts and stuff like that like whilst i did eat all of that i wish i had more mars bars and doritos and just absolute crap because you're sitting there in, in the evenings and all you want to do is eat <laughs> even though you're eating like 3000 odd calories a day all you want to do is eat so i wish i had more just junk food snacks that just kind of pick you up a little bit like after pt if you had a nice little mars bar i think that'd pick me up and uh snacks for when you're on stag as well so when you're basically doing your, your watch at night when you're in the field, having sweets and stuff like that. I'm a muncher, like for me, that's gonna keep me awake and keep me engaged with the tasks that I'm doing. So yeah, snacks and stuff like that. And also a lot of the girls that I was in a section with took protein supplements. And I normally don't have protein supplements anyway, but since I've come back from training and I'm doing a lot more like physical stuff, I've recently got into having protein shakes and I definitely think I'm gonna take it with me when I go. Uh, for my next batch of training. So just having like protein powder with you and that you can make up with water or make up with like, I don't know, a UHT milk or something. It's just so helpful to have one, having that little snack and two, making sure that you are getting enough protein every day because you're so active and you're there, you're doing 20,000 steps a day, you're doing an hour of PT a day. Like yes, you the diet that you can have there will ensure that you have enough protein, but you really don't wanna be having chicken two, three meals a day day in day out for weeks on end like sometimes you might want to go for a less protein fueled option because it's nicer but then you're not getting your protein so definitely want to bring a nice protein shake supplement something like that with me next time because it just makes life easier and the last thing that i wish i brought is games we all were on the same floor of a block for my second mod and it meant that there was like 30 of us basically within a 30 second walking distance of each other and we had a common room and we had this like big tv screen in there so a lot of us piled in there at night and we all bonded and that's how we really like built bonds 
and got to know each other. But the only game we really had was Heads Up, you know, the little like phone game that's charades, which was fun for like a night. And then we were like, mm, what other games do we have? So next time, definitely pack of cards or like Cards Against Humanity or just other things to like, let us do in the evening because you'll get a lot of spare time like we finished eating probably by about seven every evening and then if we didn't have a class that was pretty much it because my kit would be pretty squared anyway by about eight o'clock i'm done but then you can't really go to bed at eight because everybody's up and faffing around doing their kit or like whatever having extra tuition from some of more like senior or ex regs that were there so it means you don't really go to bed until like 10 so you've got like two hours every evening to kill so a lot of people went on their phones and watched Netflix. Other people were a bit more sociable and they wanted to like chat with everyone. So having the games makes it easier to sort of get to know each other and break down the barriers and like build your bonds, which is I think really important for when you're away on these weeks. And it does mean that you come away with some really good friendships. So games is basically the takeaway. Bring cards, bring stuff that you can play with each other. So that's all the kit that I wish I brought for my training. And the next portion of my training is a lot more physical and it's more in the field. So there's gonna probably be extra things that I wanna bring for that. But for mod one and mod two, at least those are the things I wish I had with me. So hopefully this video helped you if you're going on your reservist training uh, coming up or if you have been on your training and there's other things that you think would be really helpful that I haven't mentioned then put them in the comments below I will see you guys in the next one I'll see you guys next time bye